Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you the different methods of copying vector shapes from Illustrator into Photoshop and the pros and cons of each method. Let's get started. So here we have our vector shape in Illustrator and here's a document in Photoshop that I prepared beforehand. So going back to Illustrator I'm going to select my entire vector shape and copy it and press Ctrl V to paste it in Photoshop. Now you'll notice that when I paste it in I get a few different options. I can paste it as a smart object, pixels, a path, or a shape layer. So the first one that we're going to take a look at is a smart object. So I'm going to select smart object and hit OK. Then I'm just going to press enter to finish pasting it into my document. So if I click on one of my handles here and scale my image up, you'll notice that when I finish placing it, that all my edges are still nice and sharp. Even if I scale it up and down a few times, all my edges are going to remain sharp. And that's because the smart object has the original vector shape stored inside. Now, if I double click the thumbnail in the layers palette for my smart object, it'll automatically open the original vector shape within Illustrator. Now I can select a few of these shapes and do things like change the colors. And all I have to do is press Ctrl S to save, close that smart object, and when I go back into Photoshop, it'll automatically update. So again, I can double click that icon, make any changes that are necessary, hit save, close it, and back in Photoshop, it'll automatically update. Since the original vector is within that smart object, I can again scale it up without losing any quality. I'm going to hide that smart object and press Ctrl V again to paste my vector. This time, I'm going to select pixels and hit OK. Again, I'm going to hit enter to finish placing it in my document. Now, at first glance, it almost looks the same as when I pasted my vector smart object in. But this time, you'll notice when I resize it that it loses quality and gets a little blurry around the edges. What's even worse is if I scale it up and down just one more time, you'll see that it gets even worse quality. That's because once you paste it in as pixels, you lose all the vector information so you have a smaller resolution file to work with. You'll also notice I can't really do anything in my layer, so if I double click, all it does is open the layer style dialog when compared to the smart object, which opens the original vector format file. So I'm going to hide that pixel version and press Ctrl V again. And I'm going to skip path for now and choose shape layer and hit OK. Just like a smart object, I can scale my vector shape up and down without losing any quality. If I double click my icon in the layers palette, it opens up the color picker where I can easily change the color and it updates in real time. Now with a shape layer, you won't be able to change the color of individual shapes without duplicating that layer and deleting some of the sub objects using the direct selection tool or the path selection tool. Lastly, I'm going to create a new layer and using my brush tool, I'm going to paint a whole bunch of black squiggly lines here. And then I'm going to press Ctrl V to paste my vector shape in one more time, this time selecting path and hitting OK. Now you'll see that Photoshop automatically created a new vector mask using my vector shape as the mask. So if I come over and choose my direct selection tool or the path selection tool, I can highlight my path and right click and free transform it to scale it up and down without losing any quality. I can also do something like change the foreground color to white right click on my path and choose fill or stroke path to create some pretty cool effects. Smart objects are typically the best because they're the most flexible. You can always go back and edit the original shape and you can also use things like layer styles and filters. On top of that, most filters will be applied as smart filters to a smart object. So you can always go back and edit your filter settings too without having to start over from scratch. I'm John Shaver for Photoshop Video Academy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.